Ladies and gentlemen, the Doomsteef Audio Fiction Magazine presents The Thirteen Nights of Halloween with Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Yes, welcome back to a 13 days of Halloween. Nights. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> 13 nights of Halloween. <laughs> I am your somewhat sane host, Rish Outfield. And I'm your insane host, Big Anklevich. You know what scares me? They're rebooting... The Dukes of Hazard film franchise. Film franchise? That's not a franchise. You don't call one movie a franchise. That is pretty scary. They Ooh. had a direct video sequel. Oh, really? They didn't have any of the same actors in it. <laughs> so it's not a franchise. So, I mean, the sequel could maybe be called a reboot, too. I I, I don't know. I Reboot, get, that word gets thrown around too much. Yeah, well, it's because people have computers and they have to reboot them a lot. Especially if you have a PC, because those things, I mean, any little thing, you fart too much around it, and all of a sudden it's like... My PC has not crashed today. Your Mac? Oh, my Mac is older than... Boop! Your Mac has crashed during this recording. (laughs) Please donate to the show. Yes, please. I was thinking that it would be fun to talk about bad dreams tonight. Okay. Um, You know, I'm one of those guys with a messed up imagination, too much imagination, probably. And sometimes that follows me into my sleep and I sleep alone, unlike our listeners. I drink alone. Yeah, me. Yeah, with nobody else. And so nobody's there to hear my cries or my, it's it's probably more like a, you know, kind of thing. You feel like you've been screaming and stuff and the actual sound (laughs) is just like, Well, let's talk about bad dreams. What was the last time that you had a nightmare that you can remember? You know, I I can usually remember bad dreams and nightmares and so forth when I wake up, like immediately thereafter, but it doesn't take long for them to fade from my memory. You know what I mean? Like two days later, I could be like, oh, I was having this terrible dream and it was bad. I know that I've had some, not even uh, within probably a month, maybe two, but I couldn't say what they were, sadly, because it's got to be something that I think about again and again. Like pretty much the only dream I can remember having had in forever is the one that I told you about it when you came to visit me back when I lived in Sacramento. And it was led to a story idea which is the reason why I can remember the dream. <laughs> sure, but it's the last dream you remember? It's... Literally? There may be others, but I can't really... You know, they don't stick with me. I could say, oh, yeah, the dream where you're back in high school or the dream where you're doing this or that, but a specific dream, I can't remember them specifically. They fade away and turn it, you know, fall back into the soup or whatever once uh, I wake up enough. And I don't think I ever have recurring ones. Never. Per se. I mean, I guess they're similar, but it's not like, oh, it's that same dream where the wolf comes out of the bushes and bites my genitalia off. Oh, I hate that one. No, no, that's the premonitory dream. Oh, oh, sorry. I skipped ahead. So you could possibly have recurring dreams. You could have the same dream every night. It's possible. But if you don't remember it. Right. Doesn't really matter. (laughs) But being married, if she has a bad dream or if you have a bad dream, the other one might know about it. The other one might wake up and say, whoa, what, what, hey, you were saying something. Now, I, I know your wife from experience talks a great deal in her sleep. Do you talk in your sleep? Has she ever shaken you so. and said, she mostly shakes me and says, hey, you're snoring really loud. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Turn over on your side already. Gosh, like, who's Melissa Chittister? Answer me. <laughs> um, no, yeah, she, she wakes me up for snoring, but I'm pretty sure I don't talk in my sleep. Ever? I don't think so. You never had roommates or anything that told you you talked in your sleep? No. I'm sure there are times where I'm like, or whatever. Well, I don't know. But I think that's something that pretty much everybody does. But my wife wakes up a lot and says things. And she has this recurring, like, she wakes up. A lot of times, and we'll just be like, I just feel like 
we don't ever talk. And so she she always wants me to, she's like, why don't you come over here and talk to me? And I'm like, you've been asleep for an hour. You go back to sleep. You don't want me to sit down and have a conversation with you. But surely you have, maybe when you first got married or, or you didn't know her very well. And then she has no memory of the conversation or oh, she's still partially asleep or wh- what's the story? Yeah, Why, what is the trap? Why do you not want to talk to your wife? Well, just because she's not all the way awake. The words that are coming out of her mouth are some kind of weird, you know, she wakes up and it's like that punches the button that sends her into this routine of saying, oh, I feel like we never talk. And Oh, so she always says the same thing. Almost. See, you used to tell me really intimate shit that you shouldn't have said. <laughs> But you'd tell me interesting things that... She does say other things sometimes. She'll wake up and say weird crap. And I would just always be fascinated by this. I, the, For lack of a better word, the bedroom dynamic mm-hmm. uh, and all these aspects of it was really fascinating to me. You know, just uh, because there's a Ben Fold song where he mentions that he knows he's going to catch hell from his wife for things that he did to her in a dream. I've While had she that was happen. And, and I, that resonated with me because before we ever even heard that song, you had told me yeah. that she was super mad. And you're just like, what, what? And she's like, well, you did this. And it was Victorian England. And then you had a cod piece. And, you, and you're just like, wait, <laughs> no, I, I've never even been. Wait, what are you talking about? Well, I have a cod piece, but I haven't worn it in at least a month. Come on, baby. <laughs> You just, it was just nonsense. And you're just like, but you're seriously mad at me for that? Because I, that wasn't, that was Mr. Darcy. And, she, and she's just like, <laughs> you men are all alike. You're sleeping on the couch. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I have actually had her be mad at me for something that happened in a dream. And she woke up and she was just mad and she couldn't quite put her finger on why she was mad at me. And then she finally realized halfway through the day, oh, it was because of what he did in the dream. And I shouldn't really be mad at him, but I still am. Well, and see, <laughs> that's for normal people, for everybody but you. You know, your mind is still active during your dreams and your emotions are still active and and you'll feel and and experience things. And maybe part of you knows that it's not real. But I think a lot of the time, maybe it's it's repressed stuff or maybe it's stuff that you need to get out or things that, you know, your I almost said your dreams. But but I mean, by (laughs) dreams, I mean, by like hopes and aspirations Uh and things that you're fulfilling somehow in your subconscious that are necessary for sanity. Mm-hmm. for development as a human being and and that's why i'm insecure. the insane host you know we all have fears and we all have we have insecurities and dreaming about you know standing up and giving a talk in front of a bunch of people and you realize that you're naked or 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 one of the, i mean our ways of dealing with these fears or or ways of Having dwelling on those fears well, you know it, it can't always be healthy Maybe you're just able to finally expose yourself in front of people like you've always wanted to. It's your dream. Well, that's what I was saying with aspirations and stuff. (laughs) I mean, you know, there there are things that you wouldn't choose to dream about. But I don't know that I would choose to dream about hardly anything that I dream about. Have you ever had bad dreams where it's awful and you're just like, oh, this is the worst. And the whole time you, you, you can't tell that it's a dream, but then you wake up from it. And you're like, oh, this is a dream. But then you're afraid to go back to sleep because you're pretty sure that if you do, that dream may just start back up from where you left off and keep going. You're yeah. just like, oh, I don't want, I, but it's like two in the morning. I can't just go do the dishes or something. I got to go back to sleep. Uh, shoot. And then you go back to sleep and maybe it does or doesn't. I don't know. But there have been lots of times where I've had dreams like that where I'm just like, I don't want to go back to sleep because that sucked. Well, there's also a helplessness and, a, you know, you're at the will of your subconscious and the things that you're most afraid of and, and, and all that. And as a kid, I was just terrified of having bad dreams. And I, you know, I was a big into wanting to watch scary movies or monster movies or, you know, even just like a commercial for a horror movie that was coming out or whatever would be all that it would take. And I just, you know, poof, eyes wide, just don't, I don't want to go to sleep because. So you had bad dreams about having bad dreams? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you were so scared of bad dreams that you would have bad dreams about yourself having a bad dream i don't know i i, I was probably much more or, or i'm sorry i am still much more <laughs> mentally ill than you are despite you being the insane host <sighs> but i i as a child i would have really really similar dream you know dreams that, i guess you could say recurring dreams but i don't know i mean one of them was we moved into this house 
that my dad had built next to the house he was born in. And it had a basement, but the basement was unfinished. And I'm in my 30s now, and I will still dream about that unfinished basement. There was something evil down there. There was something, there was something that lived down in the basement. And during the night, it came out and you didn't want to go down there or it was the people under the stairs. It, well, it? it was something like that. I just, I have a visual in my head that's clear, like a childhood memory of walking down the hall and there's the darkened staircase down to the basement and there's somebody standing there or something standing there. And it's just like, you know, you shouldn't have gotten up to go to the bathroom because uh -huh. it sees you now. You know, it doesn't know you live here because you are awake during the day and it is asleep. But now, you know, the roles are reversed or whatever. And and I see that. I see and I can even see like, you know, my footy pajamas or whatever that I was wearing. <laughs> uh, so I must have had this dream all the time. But it's so strange that here I am an adult, ostensibly, and I still sometimes suddenly it's, you know, the late 1970s or whenever that was. And I, I'm afraid of that basement and like the walls aren't built and, and it's just like wooden slats and stuff. And, and you know, there's no carpet or tile or anything on the floor. It's just cement. And the house hasn't been like that for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And yet it's, that's what I go back to in these dreams. And I, again, I guess I remember them better than you do, but I'd say I still don't remember 95% of my dreams or 90 some. If we all dream several times every night, I will only remember one dream a month or something like that right. and you remember nothing. So I wonder how many times do I have that dream? And then I did have a recurring dream as a child and it was I it's even it's hard to put into words cuz it was visual, but it was like a being buried alive kind of dream, but there were lots of us. And in in fact, what it reminds me of is in the Matrix when you go out of the Matrix and there's all these people attached to machines and they're all in the goo they're pods. all I, and i don't know it's been a long time since i saw the matrix i'm the one person on earth that didn't just go crazy about the matrix so maybe because of this recurring dream as a child but were, were they all stacked up on one another and just you know just row after row yeah, row i of think people? so you know so many that there were thousands you know, as far as the eye could see of these people being yeah and that's what my dream was like I, I, also on v the miniseries, the, the 83 or, or, or the 84 follow-up, all the human beings that had been taken for food were in some kind of chamber like that. All They, they were all upright. And in my dream, we were all laying down and I woke up and I realized that I was there, but there was nothing that I could do. And, and the, the helplessness and the horror of realizing where you are, but there's nothing you can do, was the worst part about that dream, I guess. Or the fact that it just kept happening and happening again. And and maybe somebody listening is like, well, obviously you came out of the Matrix for a second and you looked around. <laughs> and then, you know, the bug alien robot thing put you back to sleep. And now you're back here pretending to podcast. There but, you go. I mean, and that's... They're, they're, they're demons, demons, Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> that opens up a, a can of all sorts of different worms. Because we could talk about being buried alive. We could talk about... The, the basement. Did you you guys have a basement and now all of your children sleep in the basement? Yeah. Do they have any fear of the because because part of it is still unfinished, right? And and cold sort of and, it's it, we're halfway through finishing it actually right now. We're putting drywall onto it right now. So it's to the point where it's not so much that way anymore, but they have a tendency not to do a, like you send them down there to do something. Go put this away in the in the storage room. They'll go down to the basement, open the door to the unfinished part, just toss whatever it is in on the ground. And then later I'll go down there and walk and be like, what the? I sent them down here and told them to put this away. And it's just sitting there right inside the door basically is... And I, I can't... I've never been able to decide whether it's because they're scared of it or just because they're accustomed to putting forth the least amount of acceptable effort when doing a task. <laughs> Because that's the way I was when I was a kid. Least amount of acceptable effort I would do. Tell me about your mother. Tell me about your mother. Tell me about your childhood at home. Why do you say you're Sigmund Freud? Why do you say I'm not Sigmund Freud? <laughs> okay, uh, but, but t tell me about your childhood at home. Did you guys have a basement? We did not. Yeah, there's no basement. Uh, pretty much anywhere uh, near where I live, there's no basements. I guess the water table is too high there, so it's oh, yeah. not prudent. To build a basement. Did you have an attic? 
Well, we there was a small crawl space kind of an attic, but not an, a big thing that you would keep things and stuff like that. So I never went inside of it. I don't, couldn't even tell you what it looked like. Did you not go in there because you were afraid or because... No, it was just a little like a hole in the ceiling in like the hallway and you'd have to get like a ladder out and like climb up into it and you know it just wasn't something a kid could get into really mostly the reason why i never went into it all right you're not helping me out here sorry (laughs) my uh, childhood was okay well what about nightmares as a kid if you saw a commercial for the howling or something like that you wouldn't have nightmares after no i would i had plenty of nightmares i had even unusual ones i i swear i remember and i can't couldn't tell you all what it was about but i somehow had a nightmare that involved the fish tank and it wasn't like a, a my head was being submerged in the fish tank or anything it was just like the noise and the bubbly sound that the fish tank made gave me a nightmare <laughs> I don't, and it's weird. I can still remember the feeling of dread from that nightmare, but I can't remember the nightmare itself at all. Did you have your own room? No. Are you kidding me? I was lucky if I didn't have four of my brothers and sisters in the same room with me for the most of my life. I did get my own room by the time I was like in high school. So if you had a nightmare as a child, would you go to one of your siblings for comfort or would you go to mom and dad or were you expected to just tough it out? I would, well, maybe I was supposed to tough it out, but I would usually go to my mom's uh, bed and be like, mom, mom. And my mom would always, <laughs> she, she never woke up well. <laughs> she was one of those people that always startled out of sleep. So you'd come in there and you'd try and be like quiet and like wake her up like softly like, mom, mom. And she's like, <gasps> that's so weird because your wife does that same thing <laughs> from, from experience. experience. <laughs> and yeah, it was always. Uh, but you don't wake up like that. No, I don't. Yeah, she would just always do that. And it, it was almost humorous enough to <laughs> dispel all that scariness from your Aww. bad dream. <laughs> but yeah, actually, a lot because of that, a lot of times I would just get a blanket and just lay on the floor next to their bed and never actually wake them up. Oh, well, that's considerate of you. Um, well, it wasn't that it was considerate. It was just always, I mean, that's what she would tell me to do anyways <laughs> when she woke up. She'd be like, oh, okay, well, you can just sleep there on the floor next to the bed. And she would wake up so freaked out and gasping in terror that I just, at a certain point, decided, you know, it's probably better just to lay down here without waking her up because why? That's what I'm going to do anyways. Why would she wake up like that? And why does your wife wake up like I that? I don't What is it? I don't like, know. Surely... When you guys first got married or a year later or 10 years later, you said, honey, why? Why do you think that we've been living together for all this time? What do you think that I am or what do you think is happening? Why do you freak out like that? Yeah, I have no understanding. It's some kind of, I don't know if it's some deep kind of, maybe it's because women always feel less powerful than men or something like that. So they're afraid of anything like that coming upon them when they're unaware. I don't know what it is. And yeah, that's totally understandable, but But yeah, it is strange. She's been with you for so long now that it's like, okay, enough is enough. (laughs) You should be comforted when I come and get in the bed or. Yeah, you would think, but it's just something about waking. Maybe she sleeps deeper than I do. I don't know. There has been a few times where she's woken me up and I've done some crazy things. Like one time I kicked her when she woke me up in the middle of the night. And apparently she was, this happened at a time when she was pregnant. So I kicked her like in the stomach (laughs) when she woke me up in the middle of the night. So that explains that one kid. How does that work? (laughs) Ah, Oh, sorry. I talked (laughs) over it. But, uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, but how does that happen? I mean, she would would she not have had to come all the way around the bed and position herself somewhere where you could kick her? I, I, I'm not sure how exactly it worked out, but she was freaking out. She's like, whoa, 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 ah, what are you doing? Because a lot of the time during the time that we've been married, either she or I have worked a god-awful shift. Okay. I've worked the morning doing the morning news show for a couple years where I would have to be at work at 4 a.m. Now she does the early morning shift. She has to be somewhere super early in the morning. It used to be that when she got up to go to work, we knew it was time to stop podcasting. <laughs> right. 
so yeah uh i think it might have something to do with that you're not always sharing a bed with each other because half the time one of you is gone and because of that too you know she goes to bed really early and i tend to get into bed much later than she does so you know time that we're actually sharing the bed together it tends to be only a couple hours as opposed to the whole night so maybe it has something to do with that i don't know okay now what about if she has a bad dream what about if you're both asleep and you hear her go <gasps> or whatever do you wake up do you sleep through that? Do you but, ask her what's wrong if everything is okay? And does she ever but, wake you up to say that she had a bad dream, you know, and wants to talk about it? I think she, I've mostly slept through any of that. There's times that she's told me the next morning that she's had a bad dream, but I don't know that she's ever woke me up because it was just so much that she couldn't get back to sleep or something like that. What about yourself? You, you keep uh, grilling me like this is all about only me and my dreams. What about your... Uh... Yeah, but your stuff is interesting <laughs> because you've got a totally different perspective and you've also got an irrational bed partner. Um, <laughs> and so, but okay, something we talked about in our very first 13 Nights of Halloween episode was waking up and there's somebody at the foot of your bed or standing right next to the bed. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you've had that happen. Yeah. Do you instantly know that's my son or my daughter or Michael Myers? Or does it take you a second? Or, I mean, have the, have you ever opened it? Like I was telling you about the bookcase or whatever being just this black shape that looks like it's standing in, in the room. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, even just this year, you know, I wake up and there's somebody standing there. And it takes, I don't know, five seconds or whatever before my imagination recedes or whatever it is. My subconscious recedes. And I see, you know, there's not a guy standing there. That's the bookcase. We used to have a coat tree. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's it's basically the st it's a stand that has the arms coming off the top that you hang your coats on. Okay. We used to have one of those when we first got married. And I remember there were times when we had that in a room as one of the furnishings in the room. And so you wake up in the middle of the night and there's a thing... With arms, and it's a person-sized thing. There were a few times where I'd wake up and think that that was somebody, something in the room, and it would take a while. I don't know that the kids have ever uh, caused me you know, alarm like that. You just know it's the kids. But I, I think I have mentioned there was a time where my wife and I, were we both woke up late at night, and I think I went to the bathroom, and like she came out and went into the kitchen or something like that, and then I came out of the bathroom, and I saw her walk out of the kitchen, and I was like, holy crap, there's somebody in our house, and I was... You went to beat it up. Yeah, I was that close to running over and tackling my wife <laughs> before I realized... If it had been me, I'd been like, take my wife, take whatever you want, please just leave me alone. <laughs> Which I was totally surprised by. I think I've told this story yeah, we told on the it show about, like the five show. times. But I was totally surprised that that was my reaction. That my reaction wouldn't have been run back into the bedroom, close the door or something, or run to the kids' room, close the door. Uh, the fact that I immediately was going to... Uh, how would I know whether that guy's got a freaking gun in his belt or a knife or whatever? I go tackle that guy and he just goes... <laughs> but that still was my instinct immediately. And I was pretty surprised... What was her reaction? Did you not frighten her as well? Her reaction was, don't tackle me, please. I'm pregnant. You already kicked me in the stomach last week. Cut it out. It was the next <laughs> night. Oh. <laughs> How did I marry this crazy person? <laughs> it's not subtle anymore, okay? I don't know. That, that's really interesting to me. Uh, do you have one of those houses where you there's like creaky floors and you can hear some, when somebody's walking around? Yeah, we, we notice that a lot sometimes because the, the one thing that, you know, we have a bathroom upstairs and a bathroom downstairs and downstairs where the kids sleep upstairs. But the kids will come upstairs to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night only. They will never use the dang bathroom downstairs. But that flies in the face of their laziness that you referred true. to before. True, yeah. Why they, would you go all the way from one end of the house to the other? I do not, I've do. i never been able to understand. They just don't like that downstairs bathroom. They won't use it during the day. They won't use it at night. They just won't use the stupid downstairs bathroom. What do they know that you don't know? Probably that there's a turd <laughs> floating down there that hasn't been flushed for a week. Okay, well, that then that's... <laughs> 
that's a justified fear. <laughs> but they'll do that. They'll come up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And sometimes, which is worse, and this is something that my wife, I guess, she did this a lot when she was younger. She would sleepwalk. It's not so much that she's like got her arms out and is walking in a trance or whatever, but it's just that she was woken up by needing to go to the bathroom or something and then didn't make it all the way to the bathroom before she's not with it enough to know what the heck she's doing. And so she'll be wandering in the front room. And, st- and now my kids do that sometimes. They'll wake up, they'll come up to the bathroom, and then you'll hear them come into the other room instead. And you have to go out and get them. <laughs> There's actually one time where my daughter did that. She came up and she was kind of sleepwalking. I'm like, ah. Oh, bathroom's over here and so i took her and i sent her into the bathroom (laughs) and she went in and sat down on the toilet and went to the bathroom then i went in and saw that she never actually opened the lid to the toilet so she sat on the top of the toilet and peed all over the place i'm like well you're gonna wake up now because i gotta throw you in the bathtub kid But, uh, yeah, they'll come up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. You hear the, you'll hear the hallway and stuff creaking as they will go around. And so we can hear them be like, hey, who's out there? What are you doing? And if they don't answer. Half the time they won't. They're barely awake. You know what I mean? Well, do you always go investigate if they don't answer? It doesn't happen all that often. But, yeah, I'll usually go and see uh, who it is and if they need help because of the whole sleepwalking, not quite asleep, not quite awake thing that they sometimes do my nephew who just turned two will sometimes have and i i don't know if this is the technical term but people refer to them as night terrors Mm -hmm. and it's horrible because he's not awake but he doesn't seem to be asleep and he's flailing and screaming you know as though something is wrong as though something is hurting him or whatever and he doesn't respond to your picking him up or, or sh- sh- you know, or, or asking him what's wrong or anything like that. And, right. And sometimes, but see, now I'm one of those people that doesn't sleep soundly. And so more often than not, I'm awakened when he screams during the night. And so often I'll go up and I'll try and comfort him. And to me, it's, it's just a horrible, helpless feeling because there's nothing I can do. And, I, and my mom told me that in that case, you know, because I guess I did that as a child sometimes, you got to go to the sink and get some water in your hand and splash it on their kid's face and the sh- the surprise or whatever will actually wake them up. And so I have done that a couple of times. And, and you know, he stops and he opens his eyes and he's like, eh. <laughs> and, you know, it'll be hyperventilating and all that stuff. And maybe that seems cruel. I don't know what the actual solution is, but it's way better than the screaming and, and <laughs> struggling and, and, and trying to get away to from him. something. I mean, I assume, you know, it's it's the ghost of B. Arthur or something, you know, it's just something horrible. Wow. It would really be that the, terrifying? The, the book of Jules poetry, you know, there's something that's trying to get him. <laughs> uh, the, you know, the entire you cast of Jersey Shore is at the window for this kid. These pieces of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. I had never really heard of this until my friend Jeff had a kid and his son did it. But he was compounded with your kid's curse of sleepwalking. And so he would sleepwalk and then have a night terror. And like one time, I guess he did it like in the hall or whatever. And, and, and Jeff was sure that somebody had come and was taking his boy or whatever. Uh-huh. You know, it's just like, holy crap. Yeah, that's um, tough. The, the the mystery, the unknown, the why is he doing that is really horrible. And, and because of my imagination, it's like, what does he see in the room that I don't see? You know, that kind of stuff has always been terrifying to me. <laughs> and, and, you know, you've read some of my stories. The thought that there are people who can see things that we can't see or see things as they truly are, but we don't has fascinated and repelled me at the same time all my life. And I do wonder about that something, you know, the stories that you hear of the baby is crying and the guy wakes up and he goes to give the baby the bottle and there's a woman standing at the crib or something like that, you know, just that kind of thing, like some wild haired woman wanting to take the child or, or, you know, sometimes the woman is comforting the child, but it doesn't matter because that's not going to comfort you. <laughs> you know, the thought of a ghost or, or a being or something being there that shouldn't be there. And I, I don't know. I mean, because they're not my kids, I probably don't feel the connection that you do 
to yours, but they are so helpless and dependent on you in everything that to be helpless yourself, to not know what to do about it, to not be able to fix it makes you just feel awful. Do you remember that story of the hog-faced man in the Drabblecast? I don't. Oh, you ought to go and listen to that sometime. It's basic. The Parsec winning Drabblecast. Yes. Not, not, not the six-time Parsec losing Dune Steve, but the uh, multiple Parsec winning Drabblecast. So it's going to be a better story, and it's going to be better done. Uh, no. Oh. Ne- neither nor. <laughs> <laughs> but it will have Norm Sherman. Yes, it does have Norm Sherman. He's, he actually okay, reads it. It's from so early on in the podcast that it was like him reading all the story every single time. And okay, tell me about the hog-faced boy. Hog-faced man, yeah. It was just the, this person comes and he sees a hog-faced man standing over his child's crib. And he's it's freaky and all that. And he keeps, I think he sees this hog-faced man several times in regards to his child and then eventually he finally discovers that this hog-faced man is actually a ancestor of theirs from the future that is coming back in time just to see his grandfather or dad or something like that why is he hog-faced i don't know he's just in the future there's animal genes spiced within us i don't know maybe he just has a, a nose that's kind of more turned up okay Story sort of falls apart in the end, doesn't it? I don't know, remember if that was explained, but I liked the story back when I heard it. I thought it was pretty neat, but it kind of went along with those lines. How about you hear your child crying or calling out to you, and you go in there and they're gone? Has this ever happened to you? The kid, the kid or you know, you, you go in to... Have you checked the children? You go in <laughs> to just check on the kid or whatever, and they're, you know, because your kid's... Don't always sleep in their beds. Your that's daughter true. Yeah, that's happened wants to, me a to lot. supplant you in your rightful place at head of the table. <laughs> you know, things like that. That's happened to me a lot where uh, I go downstairs or whatever at some point and, and then I just look in on the kids and one of them's not there. There's been times where, you know, they decided that they were going to be sleeping in the other kid's room that night and I didn't know that. Or there's even been times they're spending a night at a friend's house that night and I didn't know that. You know, I came home late or whatever from work and that had already taken place or whatever. But I've never had somebody like, hey, come here. And then I go down there and they're gone. But uh, that can be pretty frightening. Yeah, when they're not uh, in bed like you expect. I don't know if this has been more fun or scary. It was meant to be scary, but the, the thing about dreams is, again, we don't have control over where our mind chooses to take us or, or go or explore. Or, and, and there's something so awful about not being able to get away or not being able to move. Or, you know, it's like you, you see what's coming. You see, you know, your child in danger or whatever, and you can't do anything about it in these, these dreams. But, you know, luckily one of us has no memory of the dream later on, so he just gets to carry on with his... There you go. ...stay. Okay, well, we'll call this one an episode, and uh, we'll sign out, and we'll have another one for you tomorrow. If we last that long. Yeah, that's actually getting pretty uh, dubious about It's getting getting hard, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, thanks for listening, folks, and uh, have a good evening. Good night. See you tomorrow. Pleasant dreams. Yeah. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. You've got to be kidding me. Somebody in the forums wanted us to talk about our children being in peril. Is that is now a good time for that, or is that another episode? Or do you I would say talk about that, that should be another episode because we've been going for a good 30 minutes already. We don't want to make these all marathons. It is a marathon. Yeah, but there's supposed to be 13 miles in the marathon, not 13 marathons of Move your legs. marathons. Something moved over there. I thought it was our shadow. Probably that mouse. It may have been, but we're not hearing it.